we are going to be swapping the CPU on a Super Nintendo. Got to check and make sure our tweezers are big enough to grab this large of a chip. And we're just going to go ahead and apply some hot air around the edges with a smaller tip on the hot air station. Just want to see if we can get all this warm enough to pull this chip off. It takes a little bit of heat, but not that much considering the size of the chip to get everything warm enough to get this off. And we'll give it a little test here to see if we can get it off yet. And not quite, it's still snug. You don't want to pull up too hard and damage any of the pads underneath. And there we go. Dropped it, but still got it off okay. And you can see all of the pads that look good there. None of them got torn up. We were using plenty of heat and all of the solder was liquid. And we're going to take some solder braid and go ahead and clean these, clean this whole area up and get it prepped for the new CPU to go on. We're going to add just a tiny bit of flux. We don't need any, but we are going to add just a tiny bit. It does help the, the process a little bit. Just kind of a personal preference there. And we do use a large tip. It, it speeds this process up and makes it much easier. Otherwise, sometimes you'll see the solder braid will get stuck to the board. And you can see all the solders off of those pads there. Nice copper look underneath. Move over to this side. Just going to kind of scrub the solder off of those just like so. And you can see with that little bit of flux on there, that stuff just comes right off into the wick. And we'll get this third side over here. Same process, plenty of heat, some solder braid, and we're just going to kind of rub it over top of that. You do want to be careful how much pressure you're applying so you don't damage any of the pads. We don't have the board in a board holder, that's why it's moving on us a little bit. And we'll go ahead and get this last side cleaned up here. You'll notice everything looks good right now, no damaged pads. And once we run this braid over here, we do damage a couple of the pads a little bit. There you can see they're already knocked loose to the right. Um, and I noticed that and a little bit careful at that point so we don't tear them off completely. And it's not a big deal. We This is type of repair is pretty common. It's easier if you don't break the pads off, but if they do come off, they are still repairable at this point without too much work. And a little bit solid, doesn't want to move too easy, so we're going to get something smaller to push that over with instead of any of our tweezers is a little bit big for that. We're going to go ahead and clean the area up just a little bit before we fix those pads there. Just some 99% isopropyl and just a standard Q-tip. Just a light amount of pressure. Just barely want to rub over those pads so we don't rip them up. And we're going to see if we can scrub that off there a little bit. It's on there pretty good. But you can see how easy that alcohol just cleans that flux right up. You don't need any pressure or you don't need to, to scrub too hard to get that off there. And you can see a little bit of flux there from when we dropped the chip. It's on there pretty good. It's not wanting to come off too easy, but that's no big deal. Just a bit of a perfectionist. like to get it cleaned up as best as possible. Everything looking good. And we're going to get a little tiny pointer here and go ahead and straighten those pads out. See that one popped up a little bit, but we're able to press it back down. Straight as an arrow, all three of them. We'll be a little bit mindful that those are weak pads when we're soldering them back down to the CPU. And we're going to place the new CPU down and get it into place. Get it in the correct position with all the pads lined up. It's going to use our finger 
Might be a little bit easier, having a little bit of trouble getting it lined up with the tweezers there. A little bit finicky to get it in the right spot. And once we do, we're going to apply some solder on just a couple of the tabs uh, just to hold it in place. And then we'll go ahead and solder one side at a time. And it should line up perfectly. Now we're going to apply some solder on this pin here just to kind of tack it down. The solder didn't go on the best. We don't have any flux there. Let's go ahead and apply a little bit of flux to these couple areas and then we'll stick some solder on there. And we have a little bit too much solder that went down on these two pins here. So we're going to stick some solder braid on there just to wick some of that off really quick. You can see how quick that solder runs into the wick there. Just going to get just enough of that off just to make it easier instead of trying to get that solder off there with the iron. And you can see how easy that braid just wicks that solder right up. And now we're going to... Put a little solder on this end of the chip just to make sure it's held down a little bit more securely before we go off and start soldering the entire side. You see there is a little bit of play still even when you've got a couple pins soldered on the other side of the chip. When it's this big of a chip there is still a little bit of movement so we still need to make sure everything is lined up perfectly when we're tacking down this side of the chip. And just like that. Secure connection held down in place. And we're ready to solder this side. Let's go ahead and get some flux on there. Get a little bit of solder on the end of our iron. And we're just going to go ahead and solder each one of these down. Could have used a little bit more flux on this side here. And there things are looking better. Come in here and check, check each pin with the tweezers. Make sure we've got a solid connection. Every pin is solid so far. No issues with any of these. Solid, solid, solid. And we'll move on to this side here. We're going to put some flux down again. A little bit more that time. Solder is going to go on a little bit better with some more flux. We're going to get solder on the tip and then we're just going to go down the pins here and solder them down. You can see how much that flux helps with the flow of the solder. And you can see the pins move a little bit when we're applying solder so you can tell that they're not attached to anything and then once we get the solder all applied and we go and do the tweezer test uh, the pins are solid so we know we've definitely got a good connection. And the one down there in the bottom corner is not wanting to stick for us very well. We're going to add a little bit of solder here. Fix that up. There we go. Solid, 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 solid. Every pin is solid. And on to this last side here. 
second to last side. The last side has the bad pins, the bad pads, so we'll need to be a little extra cautious on those. We're going to apply some flux, and we've got some solder on the tip of the iron. We'll go ahead and touch each pin and make sure that it's connected to the board. We've got our iron up fairly high, about 890 degrees. Plenty of heat doesn't hurt. We we're only on these pins for a short amount of time, so the additional heat just helps with the flow of solder. Also, the tips I'm using are not of the best quality, so it seems like a little more heat helps compensate for the quality. And there we go. Looking good. Shiny solder joints, just like we want. And we'll go ahead and check each pin with our tweezers here. Make sure every pin is solid with a good connection. Solid, 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 solid. And on to the last side with the loose pads. Pretty much going to do things the same here. We're going to apply some flux. And those are our loose pads right in there. Go ahead and apply the flux here. Make sure we get plenty on those pads. And we've got solder on the iron. We're just going to run down these really quick here and make sure everything is connected well. Again, we're still using plenty of heat to help with the flow of solder. And we'll go back over these one more time, even though everything was looking good on the first pass. And everything's looking great. Let me go ahead and add a little bit of solder on this last one here, just to make sure it's got a good connection. On to the tweezer test. Solid, solid, solid. Solid, solid. Oops, and you can see that moved a little bit, but we are connected to the pad, so we are all good there. Solid, solid, everything is solid. We're ready to clean this CPU up and give it a test. Get some 99% isopropyl on a Q-tip. We're going to be extra careful on this side here with the loose pads and we're going to scrub the whole area up all around the CPU, all the pins. We're going to power it up and we're going to test it. Get this second side cleaned up here. That flux cleans up really nice with some 99% isopropyl alcohol. You can see the Q-tips getting dirty as we scrub up the flux. And we're going to finish cleaning up the CPU here and the area around it. And we found out after the test that the CPU we replaced was also faulty. So we're getting a different result. However, we still have a bad CPU.